How's it going guys? My name is Tavarish and today I am so excited because behind that garage door is my brand new car. Actually, when I say brand new, I don't mean brand new because you guys know me. For those of you who don't know me, I love used cars. I love depreciated classics and exotics. Uh, I love the fact that uh, a car has some history. I love the stories that people have with cars and this car is no different. If you've seen the headline or title of this video, you guys already know what it is. So uh, I'm not gonna waste any time by just showing you a closed garage door. Oh yeah. Oh, this is awesome. So this is a 2003 Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG and it is mine. I bought it. And this is not just any AMG. Uh, this is the cheapest one in the country, maybe even the world. Well, the cheapest running one with a clean title. It's not a salvage title. It's not a flood vehicle. Uh, it hasn't had any accidents uh, that I'm aware of. And it actually runs and drives. This car, um, when it was brand new in 2003, was $130,000. I bought it for a little less than that. I bought it for $8,900, which is right around half what fair market value for this car would be at the current moment. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a milestone for me. I'm more excited about this car than I was when I got my Aston Martin. You guys saw how excited I was when I got that car. So let me pull this out. I, I've, uh, I've just gotten here. I'm at, I'm at my parents' house in New Jersey. I just got here yesterday. The only thing I've done to the car was check it out. Yesterday was raining a lot, and uh, all I did was put on the Florida license plate so I could drive around. But other than that, I have not done anything. I haven't even driven this car. Uh, I just went inside and uh, made sure that it wasn't basically on fire. But this is the first time, as you can see, it's a, it's a nice sunny day. This is the first time I ever get to see it in sunlight. And uh, I'm gonna go over some of the awesome features that this car has. So without further ado, I'm gonna pull it out of the garage. All right, it's a little tight in here, but I think I'll manage. Put the key in. And. <laughs> Well then. <laughs> so here she is. Oh man, this is one good looking car. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss for words, but um, the reason I got this car is because I've always admired this SL model, especially this one. This is the R230. This was 2003 to uh, 2007 or 8, I believe. And even the uh, model after this was basically just a facelift. Like they just changed the front end around, they changed some electronics, but it was basically the same car. I think this is the best looking SL Mercedes has ever made. And that includes the Gullwing. And I know that I'm gonna be in the minority uh, of opinion with a lot of you guys, but uh, man, this thing is, I think out of the factory, this thing is just perfect. This one in particular, a little bit rougher around the edges, but you can still see that awesome SL shape uh, underneath. Now, for those of you who don't know what this car is, this is a hardtop convertible made by Mercedes-Benz. And what they did is they took a regular Mercedes uh, SL. Uh, they came in SL 500 and uh, 600 variants. Uh, I believe in Europe they had like a SL 350, which was like the V6 version. But they took them off the production line and they sent them to a, a Falterbach. That is AMG's uh, tuning headquarters. So they built a... Uh, V8, a supercharged V8 by hand. This is a 5.4 liter V. Actually, let me pop the hood and show you what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay, so this is a hand-built 5.4 liter V8 with a Lichom supercharger on top. You probably can't see too much because of the, uh, the glare, but let me see if I can right here. So this is a nameplate 
that um, AMG gives all their engines when they're built by hand. This entire engine was built by one guy. Let's see if we can see his name. Can't really make that out too well, but it says handcrafted by, well, we'll have to, yeah, I can't, can't really make that out too well. Uh, I will have to clean that up, but no matter because this engine is a bit of a beast on its own. This engine is an absolute powerhouse. This M113K makes around about 500 horsepower. It's actually 493, but uh, who's counting? 500 horsepower and 516 foot-pounds of torque. And that's on the early model. The later models had 500 and... 30 foot-pounds of torque and I think 516 horsepower or something thereabouts. I'm sure uh, you Google warriors will be able to correct me on that, but this thing is awesome. It propels this car, which is not, not a light car, even though um, SL actually stands for sport light. This car weighs 4,400 pounds. It weighs more than two tons and I, I have, I mean, I know why, because it's a, the hard top mechanism and also it's a Mercedes, so it has a million uh, different modules and sensors and, uh, and creature comforts, but uh, this thing does get down and boogie. It features a five-speed automatic transmission and at the time of its inception, this was the fastest automatic car in the world. It was also the fastest convertible in the world, which uh, that's, that, that's quite a feat. It was also Mercedes-Benz's fastest, uh, fastest production car that they had made up until then, which is following in the tradition of uh, the SL line because the SL Gullwing for a while was the fastest car in the world, or at least one of the fastest cars that you can get. Hope you guys can, can understand why I'm rambling so much and just staring in awe of this car. Now, this car is not perfect it will get a video where I tell you everything that's wrong with the car. But uh, right now, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the history of this particular car and also how I got it, um, who tipped me off to this awesome buy. And we're also gonna take a little bit of a drive. Um, I actually have not driven it and I am really, really anxious to do that. So a quick 30 second history lesson on this car. Um, it was a, it's a 2003 and I bought it from a man in uh, Connecticut who was a dealer, reseller or some a horse wholesaler, something like that. And it's been, this car has been passed around from dealer to dealer, mainly because these things are known to have very, very expensive problems. Uh, the ABC suspension, the hydropneumatic suspension, I'll get into that later. Um, the SBC, um, the uh, brake system, you have the convertible top, which can be expensive. You have the engine itself, which has expensive components. Everything on this car is expensive because as I said before, this car, when it was brand new, was $130,000. Now I put out a call on Twitter saying that I'd like to uh, buy one of these cars for a reasonable price. And a Twitter user by the name of, uh, I believe it was TSCC, sent me a Craigslist listing where <laughs> this car was and it was running, driving, and the price was a little too good to, to be true. It was $8,900. And I called the guy up. I was actually on vacation in Mexico with my family at the time. And uh, lo and behold, the car was still available. The car didn't have, well, the guy said the car didn't have any mechanical problems. And he said that the car was mint other than just a few minor things. And I said, okay, what I can do is I'll send my friend over. My friend lives in New Jersey and he used to be a Lamborghini uh, technician. And he can go check out the car. And if so, he'll give you the money and pick up the car uh, and drive it back to my parents' place. That's exactly what happened. You can actually look at my friend's adventure. He uh, recorded it and put it on YouTube. Link will be in the description below uh, about how he got the car and how the car was uh, driving. So that's, uh, that's a lot of fun there. But this is, um, the car has been in my parents' garage for the better part of two months while I've been doing BS for Build stuff and the David Tracy stuff and also my own builds. Uh, I just haven't had time to come here and, and get the car. But uh, the plan for this car is uh, I'm going to get it 
roadworthy enough that I can drive it back to Florida, which is 1,100 miles away uh, at the end of this week. So let's go into the actual features of the car. The number one feature that uh, actually clinched the deal, uh, other than the price, um, for the purchase of this car, at least for me, was this. This is something called a panoramic roof. This on usual, uh, on normal SLs, this is just a painted panel. This on uh, this car is a glass top. So this is all glass and this was like a $2,000 option when it was brand new. And I've been looking for SLs, especially with this. Uh, and they are increasingly rare. I know the R129, the one, uh, the model before this year was really rare with this top. This is a little bit less rare, but still rare indeed. And I love this feature and the fact that it's not cracked and uh, it doesn't have any, uh, any faults. I mean, the... The molding's all good. This is awesome. If we go down, we'll see that right here, well, there should be a button here, but there, there isn't. If there was, this would be part of the keyless go system. Now, Mercedes introduced this system uh, back in the early 2000s, I believe with the W220, my Mercedes S-Class. And what they did with that was you have a little key. I don't think this car came with a key. I only got two regular keys. Uh, you have a little key card and you leave that in your wallet or your pocket and you just come up to the car. It's just a proximity key. Same thing that your Kia would have today, but they had it uh, in 2003. You just press this button or uh, you press this button to lock it or you grip the, uh, grip the handle and it would sense that you're gripping the handle and then you press the button and it would unlock the car and then you would open the door. When I open the door, a few things happens. So I unlock the, uh, I pull the handle and so both of these come down. Usually, usually on cars, it's just this one that comes down. But since this is a removable hardtop and this also moves respective of uh, what the car is doing, the, uh, both of these window uh, shades come down. Not in the window shades, what am I talking about? Both of these windows uh, come down. And another thing I really like is the fact that if you roll both of these down, this just becomes a pillarless coupe on top of the convertible. Let's say you want to keep the convertible top on. This just becomes a really awesome pillarless coupe without a B pillar. And that is just amazing. Open up the door. And here it is. This is a stock interior of an SL55. AMG. I'm not going to say it's cramped in here. Uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot more space than there would be in uh, actually my 3000 GT, uh, my old 3000 GT, and my Aston Martin is uh, a little bit less spacious than this. But take a look at this door panel. This is real wood. Well, this is this is broken to this little plastic part. That we're not going to worry about that. This has. This is the seat controls. Uh, so you have uh, power support for everything. You have the backrest, you have the, uh, the part where your butt goes. Uh, this is, I'm not sure what this is called, a thigh support or, or because the bolsters are here. I'm not sure what, what you'd call this. In, in any case, you can move this part, the front part of the seat. You can even move the headrest. That's automated. You can move the, the headrest up and down. That's awesome. Uh, trunk, you have three settings for memory. You also have this is this is really cool. All right, now that the car is in the accessory mode position, uh, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the heated seat. So there's two settings here. It's uh, high and low. And this is also the cooled seat. And uh, this is a ventilated seat. Basically just has um, fans inside the seat. And there are three settings for that. So theoretically, you could be heating and cooling your butt at the exact same time. Now the ventilated seat doesn't really work as well as the modern variants uh, do in, uh, in cars, but it works well enough to uh, keep your butt dry on those really hot days, especially with a convertible top that's open all the time. But uh, this is a really, really cool feature. My Mercedes S-Class has this and I wouldn't trade this feature for the world. Uh, I, I don't know if I would install it, if I would retrofit it, just because there's a lot of um, components that have to go into this, but it's nice that the feature is here. Staying with the theme of the seat, you can see this awesome AMG 
AMG Sills. Uh, this seat is also massaging. So this is uh, basically an air-powered massage. So you press this pulse button and the bolsters, they, uh, they, they basically inflate and deflate uh, in a, um, a pre-programmed arc. It's not like a uh, massage like you'd get on a brand new S-Class or SL, but for the time, it was not bad and other cars didn't have this feature. The seat itself, I mean, other than the condition, uh, which has seen better days, I mean, there's, there's cracking, on, uh, cracking on the bolsters over here and uh, also some, some wear on the leather. Nothing too bad, nothing that uh, Leather Reek or a uh, leather restorer can't get out. Um, also, this is sort of missing, and there's supposed to be an AMG logo. There is one on the other seat. This seat is quite supple. Um, there is a lot of support for, uh, for your thighs. There's a, a decent amount of bolster support, especially for the high G turns that this thing can take uh, at speed. And it is a two-seater. Now, what's behind here? We press this little button, and the entire seat just comes out. It's pretty awesome. Now, a few YouTubers have uh, said in their reviews that you can put kids back here if you want to. Like, that is impossible. You cannot put any children back here. And if you do, you do not deserve to be a parent. But uh, there is a small storage compartment here and uh, you have a CD changer and a little cubby here. But this also, you can put stuff, it's, uh, it's a little little tight in here to put a stabilizer and a camera if, uh, if you guys are getting a little dizzy. But um, you can actually put uh, something like a, a bag in here. And I haven't figured out how to take this off. This is technically a seat belt and you put it over the bag and uh, it connects down here, connects down there, and it's supposed to keep your stuff from flying around uh, when you're doing the things that this car does. So uh, yeah, I haven't figured this out. I think you're supposed to just press it, but I can't, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll just look on YouTube or something and realize that I'm a dummy, like always. So another thing that, <sighs> I love about this car is this dash, is this uh, gauge cluster. It is so freaking cool. Uh, it is reminiscent of the old 50s and 60s and 70s SLs. They have these two giant gauges with this awesome gauge pod. This is actually, it's actually Alcantara. I'm not too into suede, I'm not too into the Alcantara, but I, it works, it works here. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna kick her out of bed for for leaving crumbs, but this is awesome. Let me see how, uh, let me see if I can get a little bit more light on here. All right, that's a little better. Now, you see the speedometer; it goes up to 200, and while that is optimistic on most cars, uh, on my Aston Martin, it uh, it goes up to 220, and there's no Aston Martin in the world that can do 220 miles an hour, uh, especially a Vantage. But this car, if de-restricted, has a top speed. Some say, it's, it's been unconfirmed, but um, the math checks out, has a top speed of 208 miles per hour. That is absolute insanity. This is a stock car. It's limited to 155 miles an hour, but if you ask Mercedes nice enough, they will remove it for you or you can also get a ECU tune from a aftermarket company and they will remove that for you. It'll do 200, it will pin this 200 mile an hour speedo and that is no easy feat, especially for a car that weighs 4,400 pounds. This was, I'd say the Hellcat of its day. I'm sure that there are some more gauges in here uh, that you can program and uh, if this could focus, there we go. Um, yeah. It, there should be more uh, readouts and, and gauges that you can see, but we have RPM, we have speedometer, we have oil temperature, not oil temperature, uh, this is coolant temperature, and we have your fuel. Those are your most important gauges, and uh, let's give it a little rev. <laughs> oh, wow. That thing revs like nothing. All right, my camera's not really liking this contrast, so let's move on. So this is the command center of the Mercedes. And I say command because it's actually called 
command. Uh, this is a command 2.5 system. Uh, this is the infotainment system that Mercedes used in the early 2000s. And it is the same one that my Mercedes S-Class used. I'm used to it. I don't like it. I think it's very, very ugly. It's, uh, it's dated now. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was dated when it came out. This almost looks like a CRT. It's not a touchscreen. It's a very, very small LCD, but it, it'll get the job done. This does have an auxiliary input in there somewhere, but um, right now it's it's just doing what it does. We have uh, you have your telephone, which does not work because they uh, the manufacturers of telephones and and whatnot they switched to digital a long time ago, and this is all analog. We have your navigation, and I'm not sure if navigation, okay, there's no CD. We'll have to see if there's a CD somewhere in the car. We have your FM AM. No, that's your FM AM right there. Um, that's just ra regular radio presets. We have CD, and there's uh, CDs in the CD changer where we just saw. And uh, you have your service button. This is a blank button. And there's, it's not the should have worked harder button. This is actually you're in the wrong country button because in Europe, this would have been a TV button. Uh, so they had broadcasts that you can get in your car. And unfortunately here, we don't have that because it, it's a different wavelength or, or something or Mercedes didn't get the certification for it. So there's just no button here. So um, to get the aux, uh, the auxiliary input, you just go to service, then you go to auxiliary input. It's a little bit wonky. It's not as intuitive as you think. We just press that and it, now it's at auxiliary audio source and now you can play basically whatever you want. Um, the maps on this are very much out of date, so I'm not going to use them. I'm going to just use my phone and Waze, but it's nice to have a car that, uh, that does have maybe a backup if you're really, uh, really lost and your phone died or, or something. If we look a little further down, we can see the dual zone climate control. Uh, and I really like this setup. Now on my S-Class, it's just an L uh, LCD screen and it has a readout of the temperatures and whatnot. I like the analog feel of this, uh, these little knobs and uh, the fact that it's, it's very, very classic feeling. And uh, this, this is on auto, but if you, take this out now look at that wow so it just lights up and you can uh, you can control the individual vents that is that is awesome and if you want to forget about that and just want to go for auto click that in and now it's auto yeah it's a it's a really really nice system the AC works in this car I was I was very surprised that a car that's been this neglected uh, has not working AC so if we open this up, this is cracked right here, but that's not important. Wait, what's what's this? All right, that's uh, that's new to me. It says Audison subwoofer on it, so I guess this is a subwoofer control. So there's a, I guess there's a subwoofer in this car. All right, that's cool. Uh, and this is what is that? It's a knob of some sort. And let me see if I can. What? <gasps> You know what it is? It is a radar detector. It's a hardwired radar detector. Let me turn it off and turn it on. See? Wow. That is awesome. So whoever had this car, they, uh, they weren't above breaking the law, which we already know. We, we, we already know that. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so we'll have to play around with that. Uh, the subwoofer, I don't know if it turns on. I don't know if it's connected, uh, what, what's going on with that, but it's uh, it's kind of cool. It is a professional-looking install. It doesn't look like it's uh, like it's hacked together, at least in this part. So that's that's interesting. Okay, moving on. So here is the shifter. It is a five-speed automatic with a manual uh, manual mode, but the manual mode is just basically you row through the gears on your own. Um, park, reverse, neutral, drive, your regular regular stuff. Uh, this is a button right up top. That's for the keyless go. And uh, again, I don't have a key card, so I can't really do anything with that. I might have to go to the dealer and get that reprogrammed or get a new key card or get a new smart key or something. Uh, but if you have a key card in your pocket, all you do is come into the car, press the brake and press this button and it should fire up. And that, that's, that's kind of cool. So 
the fact that the key is in here, uh, it's only as a backup. So you're not actually supposed to use the key in this car. Um, but here are some, uh, some should have worked harder switches. Uh, these are blank plates. And I think these are for the, uh, uh, one is for Distronic. Um, Distronic means the uh, radar guided cruise control, which this car does not have. You have your ESP uh, off, that is your uh, electronic stability program. And uh, you don't want to turn that off much because this car will step out on you. It has a insane torque curve uh, and it starts basically at idle. So uh, unless you know what you're doing, you don't want to turn that off. And right now I don't really know what I'm doing, especially with this car. I'm not sure what this car is capable of. This is the parking sensors. Um, that's just to turn it off in case it gets super annoying. This basically turns on at 10 miles an hour uh, in either direction. So you'll have parking sensors in the front and rear. So if you're stuck in traffic and uh, this thing, if you're stuck in bumper to bumper traffic and somebody's tailgating you, this is gonna start going off like crazy and you'll wanna turn this off. So that's, that's a good feature to have. Here we have the car, um, the uh, ride height up and down. So there are three settings. Right now we're in the lowest setting. You see no LEDs uh, indicated and we raise the car up just a little bit and instantly the car raises up. Press it again and the car raises up one Mogan. And this suspension, uh, even even in the fact that uh, this car has been neglected, is actually in, uh, in decent shape. I might have to do something with suspension as far as R&R, uh, &R, but uh, I might have other plans for it as well. Uh, so we're gonna lower that, that down. And instant, like this thing, instantly lowers down. It's not like the Airmatic where it takes 30 to, to 90 seconds. This is instant because it's hydropneumatic. It uses hydraulic pressure at 3,000 PSI, which uh, I think can cut you in half. I'm not sure if uh, if the, the myth was busted on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure that that's, that'll be no bueno if, uh, if, you, if you hit that with, uh, with open skin. But in any case, uh, here is the ABC Sport. Um, and this basically firms up everything and has the car level uh, throughout corners. So an interesting tidbit about this car is that this, uh, this sport mode, or rather the, the entire ABC system, it has no sway bars. So a lot of people uh, tout Mc McLaren for having a sway barless suspension that is electronic and also hydraulic and, uh, and conventional, but Mercedes had this in 2003. That is nuts. So they developed this thing and it has no sway bars. It basically, all four corners are talking to each other many, many times a second. And it keeps this 4,400 pound car from going, off the, <laughs> from going off the road at a very high rate of speed. And it does a very, very good job. So the reviews of this car from when it came out, they say that this car is the best handling Mercedes that they have made up to that point. I'm sure that Mercedes has made something better. AMG GT, I, I bet handles better than this, but that's that's no small feat and uh, that's kudos to Mercedes. So this is a tilt sensor off button. Um, the alarm has a tilt sensor. So if somebody wants to steal your car by putting it on a flatbed, the alarm's gonna go off. Uh, but if you actually do want to tow the car, if the car needs to tow for any reason and this is Mercedes, so it probably will need a tow at some, at some point in his life. You're gonna use this button. You're just gonna press that, and uh, that, that's when the car is off, actually. Uh, you're gonna press that, and the car's alarm will turn off, at least on that sensor. So this is what makes the car special. This is the convertible top operation. Uh, unfortunately, on this car, it does not work. I'm not sure what the problem is. I'll have to diagnose it. But what you're usually supposed to do is basically pull this back, and you see these two little buttons. Uh, you pull that back and then you pull it back once more and on my dash it just says visit workshop I don't know if you can see that well that's that's what it says it uh, went away now um, one thing that does work is this the roll bar comes up that is awesome so this is a roll bar that uh, it deploys in Emergency situations, so if the car is at a high rate of speed and it thinks you're gonna crash, it deploys in a quarter of a second or less, but you can also deploy it yourself and uh, you can also lower it yourself. And it has this cool windscreen that apparently has cigarette burns in it uh, from, I don't know, previous owners with, uh, with women of the night, who knows. Um, but you can lower it and you can, you can put it up 
in case you don't want wind in your hair, but uh, I definitely do want wind in my hair, unfortunately. I can't get it because this thing is broken and uh, that'll be in another video where we, uh, where we try to fix this. But for now, that's, uh, that's how it works. And to put it down, you basically put this down and then press that. And it's just telling me to visit workshop. Uh, I am the workshop, Mercedes. I am the workshop. We go a little further back. This is uh, just a armrest and has, actually, I've never, never been back here. What's, what's in here? All right, so this is, this is a receipt for the New Jersey Turnpike. Um, okay, this is from when my, when my friend picked up the car. And, oh, oh, you know what this is? This is the keyless go key. Oh, snap, all right, wow. That saves me from having to go to the dealer. So this is the keyless go key. And you keep this in your wallet or on your pocket or on your person and uh, you do all the stuff that you would normally do in your car, but without having to put the key in. And this was brand new technology in 2003. There is a button here that's supposed to do something and it's not doing anything. So me thinks that uh, the batteries back here are dead. So theoretically, I could just replace the batteries here and uh, we'll, be, we'll be good to go. But uh, wow, that, that, is, that is great news. So this thing has, has a problem kind of has a problem opening. I don't know, I don't know why. So if you look further down, we'll see. All right, so there is a iPod connector for an iPod built in uh, in 1974. And this is actually a air conditioned compartment. So you can you can uh, increase or decrease the uh, the venting that goes in here. So it's not quite a refrigerator, but you can put cold drinks in here and I believe the uh, the glove box also has Eh, the glove box right there. I gotta point to the glove box because otherwise you won't know where the glove box is. Um, yeah, the glove box also has that feature. Uh, if we go down here, we'll see that um, there is a second compartment right there. Sorry if I'm hitting the camera, guys. I'm. Uh, this is my first video. I hope you like it. So there is a cradle for a for a phone. Obviously, it's a it's an older style phone, but um, a Bluetooth cradle. Uh, Bluetooth module can go here and actually replace this uh, So I might do that just so I'll have complete functionality of the phone system uh, As stock but with new phones. So that's that's awesome Man also, I mean if you look at this is all leather the entire entire dashboard is just lousy with leather it's a staple of higher-end Mercedes. My S-Class originally didn't come with this, but I had an S600 interior installed, or rather I installed it myself, and now it has this uh, stitched leather. It looks really, really good, and uh, I'm glad this car was highly optioned. I think it was even an option on the SL55. Uh, I know those were uh, optioned out cars uh, as well, but uh, I, I could be wrong on that. So if we go up here, we can see that... This is, this would be sunroof controls in any other car, but uh, this car does not have a sunroof. This is just uh, map lights. And I think this is just the, uh, the door, door lights and an SOS button. This would call Mercedes saying, help, I'm, uh, I'm trapped uh, by my wife because she found my mistress or something. I'm, I'm sure that there's a code for that in Mercedes. Um, but, uh, that's basically it over here. This is, wow, just smashing into everything. This is a sensor for the in-cabin, uh, climate control. So this senses, uh, the temperature of the cabin and it adjusts it accordingly. This is window visors, just regular. Hey, what's going on? Oh my God, this is so meta. Let's see, 24 hour roadside assistance. 1-800-4-MERCEDES. Yeah, so this is my favorite part of the car. Well, one of my favorite parts. This is the awesome panoramic roof. Wow. Um, if you don't want the, the roof on your head all the time, the roof, the roof on your head, nobody wants a roof on their head. If you don't want the sun baking your head the entire time, Mercedes has thought of that because basically the people who are buying these cars, they're most likely bald. And just press these two little buttons 
this nice little sunshade here. Now, mm, it could be a little tighter, but uh, it ain't bad. Wow, this is this is really cool, really really cool. This is well worth finding a car with this because just like a, a target top on a 996 or 997, um, it, it's just it it's so awesome and it's so cool that I'd rather I'd rather wait for the right car to come along with this than just hastily get a car without it. This is uh, so worth it. Mm. If we go around the other side and open up the car. Sort of more of the same, but right here we have a cup holder with a cup that is not mine, so that is a freebie, got a free glass. Sweet. We have our glove box and on a lot of these cars, my Aston Martin specifically, uh, the glove box is not really, like the, the panel gaps are not really all that great, but here they're just perfect. This car has about 118,000 miles on it. And really, I think it'll take well to a, a good clean. Um, and it does look like it has 118,000 miles on it, but this, uh, this dashboard looks freaking mint. Okay, so what's in here? Now you see this is the, uh, the vent for the AC. There is a auxiliary port in here. You guys probably can't see that because it's dark as hell. And all right, what's, what's this? So this is it. Oh, somebody's old yarmulke. All right, so a Jewish guy owned this car or had a Jewish friend or something. Let's see, Daniel and Andrew Levy, May 29th. This is probably from a bar mitzvah or something. Okay, so this is going in the trash. It's it's actually. It's actually kind of moist. It's disgusting. <laughs> so we got a Mercedes. What is this a mixtape? We have a bunch of CDs. Oh wow. Okay. So let me let me get this out of the sun. So these are all the Mercedes Mercedes uh, navigation CDs. It's actually quite quite cool. It's like ten CDs in here. Oh, I bet this is worth a pretty penny on eBay. What else we got? So we have a Quick Tips general reference. Uh, all right. We have a Quick Tips number two. There's a lot of Quick Tips. I, I feel like I feel like this car requires a test, and I didn't study for any of it. And also, Command Navigation User's Guide. Um, that is. It, it's it's a it's a hard read. So other than that, the the size of the glove box ain't that big. Um, it's uh, it's enough for a, some gloves, I guess. But if you put all this if you put all this crap in it, I mean, it's not going to fit anything, especially when you're stuffing old yarmulkes in there. But uh, yeah, that's that's that. Oh, this is a this is kind of a cool little compartment. So this part of the door is all closed. Let me pull it in a little bit. Uh, but if you press this button, it opens up uh, both on this axis and that axis. And uh, you can actually fit quite a bit of stuff in here. But uh, there we go. Yeah, and it just closes right up. This also has, just like the driver's side, has the three position memory, everything's power, and you have the heated and cooled seats. But um, let's go in the back. And uh, I want to show you a little bit of that convertible top action. All right, let's see if this opens. There we go. Yeah, that is that is heavy. Okay. So, uh, straight away, I can see the problem. Um, this, these flappy things, they're not supposed to be flappy. Uh, so they're flappy on both sides, and uh, that's most likely what's uh, what's keeping this convertible top from from happening but let's let's keep this up and i will show you what's in, what's in the trunk so for a hardtop convertible uh it all folds in and stays in this space now there is a separator here it uh it divides your luggage which would live down there uh from getting smashed by the convertible hardtop that uh, would probably smash it because there's a lot of hydraulic pressure uh, going on in that system. So what you do is you just pull this 
and you have a, actually a decent amount of space um, to put groceries, to put uh, maybe people's luggage from the airport or something. But if I'm inspecting this, it's like, all right, what the hell is this? Uh, would this qualify as uh, what Mighty Car Mods calls human slime? Because this is like the wiring equivalent of human slime. I think at one point, because I'm seeing a, a PC fan here, I think at one point this might have had a car pewter, car pewter, um, like a car PC system, and it was just ripped out, or maybe this was the aftermarket system. Yeah, so I'll have to take that out. But there are, there are some hideaway cubbies in here. I take this out. I think this is for, okay, so it's for nothing. Or maybe it's just something I'm missing. Um, if we look to this side, we have a, okay, that's garbage. There is a second battery here. Now, this car has two batteries, one for starting and one for running all the electronics. And this is the electronics battery. So uh, what people do if uh, they have like problems starting uh, or problems with the electronics, they replace the starter, they replace the starter, they replace the battery in the engine compartment, which is this guy right here. And that's actually a, it's actually an OEM Mercedes battery. So it's either good that the owner, the previous owner changed it, or it's really bad because it's never been changed. So I'm thinking that it might've never been changed. But what that means is that uh, this car has two batteries, twice as much cost and these batteries are AGM batteries which means that they're not regular lead acid batteries they have like a gel uh, instead of the liquid that would usually go into batteries and they're like $200 or, or more uh, at the dealer uh, or at any retailer so if those go then it's going to be expensive but it's not that big of a deal it's it's just those two bolts and uh, everything pretty much comes right out so this car does have a lot of niggles and faults and and whatnot but uh i will make a video outlining everything wrong with this car especially for the price i paid for it and what people can expect uh to get from a car that's been this neglected especially one that's this technologically advanced uh and i'm also going to fix it i'm not just going to leave it as is i'm not going to sell this this is my car this is my next project car i'm not releasing what the project is going to be just yet uh, because I'm still working out the uh, the final kinks and, and details, but uh, this let me just let me just tell you that this is going to be unlike any Mercedes SL55 in the world. This is going to be different than any other build you've seen so far. Uh, any, maybe any any Mercedes AMG build you've ever seen. But without further ado, I think I've rambled enough. I mean, I've been talking for a long, long time and I have no idea if uh, this is still interesting to you guys. It is definitely interesting to me. I love this stuff. I love uh, picking up cars that I bought sight unseen and seeing how many problems or sort of surprises they have uh, in store for me. So um, I think we're gonna go and take a drive. This is gonna be my very first drive so you guys get to go along with me on that. Okay, the first drive with my new to me SL55 AMG. Uh, my parents' driveway is uh, pretty steep so I'm going to put it, put the uh, ABC suspension in the highest setting just to get out. So right away I have a brake warning uh, saying and a brake and also reactivate tire pressure monitor. Uh, so I think this thing needs new brakes. Fortunately, the previous owner gave me a set of Brembo rotors and I actually ordered a, uh, a set of new pads. So the brakes are making a little bit of a squeaking noise, but it shouldn't shouldn't do anything to wow that's the auto response it shouldn't do anything to our test drive all right put it in drive let's put it in regular the lowest setting and we're off <laughs> oh my god okay so the throttle response on this thing is 
absolute insanity, and there's a lady having a... Okay. She's picking somebody up. So other than some random clanks and, and pops from this being an older car, it actually is quite civilized. There is a little bit of a vibration. I think the mounts need to be changed, the engine mounts. But it tracks straight-ish. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's not uh, not get ahead of ourselves there. <laughs> wow, wow. This thing is uh, powerful. That is that is not bad. So one of the things that people really get on this car about is this transmission is called the speed shift, and uh, you could shift it manually using there's paddles here uh, on the back, or rather buttons. They're not really paddles. Uh, I just put it into manual, and now there's a little indicator on my gauge cluster saying that this is in first gear, and it will not shift unless I tell it to. I think it'll shift at red line, but we're not, I'm not trying to get there because I have no idea when the last time the oil was changed. Um, but let's see how quickly this thing shifts. Actually, it takes potholes pretty well. Wow, that is... <laughs> That's like two seconds. <laughs> okay, let's let's uh, do a downshift. Okay, press the downshift button. Now? Wow. That is like a second and a half to two seconds. Uh, this ain't Ferrari quick. The engine definitely is. The engine definitely is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna see what the car is like in sport mode. First of all, uh, the tires are not in great shape and I'm not sure if I wanna push these things uh, to any sort of limits. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that they'll pop because I think one of the tires is down to the wire and I need to replace that before I leave for Florida. But I just wanna see if there are any other uh, faults that make themselves known in this car when you push it just a little bit. There doesn't, don't seem to be any, the brakes actually work fine. The brakes are very, very touchy. There are eight piston calipers in the front and four piston in the rear. They're AMG calipers. Uh, they're actually, they're Brembo calipers but made uh, with the AMG logo. And uh, they're very good. They seem to be pretty responsive. I'll need to do a brake fluid flush and, and all that. And, uh, but it doesn't seem like there's anything hideously wrong with that system. So if you give this thing any sort of throttle, it just wants to bite your head off. <laughs> wow! Wow! So this is the polar opposite of the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin is all top end, uh, all top end power, and that has no torque. I mean, I'd be lucky if I'd be getting 250 foot-pounds of torque in that car. But this, 500 foot-pounds of torque at basically 2,500 RPM. Whoa! <laughs> All right, got, got a little bit of wheel spin just in the, in the middle of the rev range. How is this car less than $9,000? There's so much car here. So if you want to get a really, really good version of this car, uh, low mileage, um, Carfax certified, uh, no accidents, one owner, you'll be looking at twenty-five dollars to $35,000. And that's right about how much I paid for my Aston Martin. I paid thirty-six dollars So, but it's a totally different experience. God, this car is fast. I know it doesn't look fast from the video, and I'm going basically just uh, just regular, regular uh, street speeds, you know, 35 to 55 miles an hour. But you can just tell that there's so much power underneath this hood. It will, it puts you back into your seat. There, there's, my organs are shifting around as I'm just driving normally, what's on a normal road. I can't imagine what this thing's like at the track. I wanna know how much this car is putting down as far as dyno numbers, but before I do that, I wanna make sure I go through everything. Uh, the belts, the belts specifically, because those belts don't look very good. And uh, I wanna make sure I do an oil change and sort of a tune up uh, and maybe change out those tires. But I am very, very happy with this car, with this purchase. 
Man, this was good. So a lot of people think that you should never buy a car sight unseen. And I'm here telling you that that's probably how you get the best deals. Uh, if you're willing to take a risk and you're willing to overlook some of the uh, more nasty faults in a car when you know how to fix them. And this car, I know it has a lot of really expensive fixes uh, that can happen. What, the, what is this guy doing? It does have a lot of expensive stuff that can go wrong. The air suspension, not the air suspension, hydro pneumatic suspension, uh, the, the engine, the supercharger, uh, all those things are very expensive if they go wrong and they oftentimes do. But if you know how to fix them and you do your research, this car can be a steal. This car can be an absolute bargain. And the fact that somebody paid $130,000 for this car and it has 117,000 miles, which is about the same mileage that I have on my S-Class and I bought that for $3,000. Man, for less than 15 grand, I got an S-Class and an SL55 AMG. That's insane. So that's, that's sort of the takeaway here. Uh, this car is not perfect, but it's not burning anything. I don't see anything coming out the back. I'm not smelling anything. Nothing's coming out of my hood. It's not on fire. It's not overheating. And it's it's actually performing quite well, other than some vibrations and some uh, some clanks and bangs from uh, from the back. But that's just because of those uh, those flaps for the convertible top. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! All right, trash control definitely stepped in there. And that was about half throttle. So at about half throttle, the, the rear tires let go, or at least my crappy rear tires. All right, I'll have to get used to that. Man, this car is very solid. The bones are good. The, the edges are very rough and frayed, but the bones of this car are extremely good. So I think, I, I think that's gonna be it for this test drive. Um, I don't think I'm gonna take it on any, uh, any mountain roads, mainly because there's a lot of power here. I don't want to trust that to my rear tires. I'll show you what the rear tires look like. Uh, I don't think I showed that to you. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to trust those things with my life, uh, especially on, uh, on a car where I haven't really gone through anything mechanically. So I think afterwards, then I can do a real shakedown after I do uh, some repairs and, and mods and maintenance uh, to this car, then I can do a real shakedown. But uh, this has been very, very promising. So a quick bit of good news um, since I, I last left you off and before I do the outro on the outside of the car. Uh, this is the Keyless Go uh, card and I went to a uh, Pep Boys and got some new CR2025 batteries. Not only for that, but uh, for the remotes because the remotes also didn't open up or close the car. I think the batteries were dead on that too. Um, so I replaced the batteries and now all I have to do is come into the car Press the brake, and uh, as you can see, there are there are no keys coming out of the ignition. Um, so press the brake and hold the start button. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is that is freaking sweet. So uh, that is a bit of good news, and uh, I hope you guys can see how pleased I am. Um, this is this is turning out to be a very very good day. So here's the car um, now that I got it back home. It's in one piece, and it's a. Uh, it's not bad other than this tire. Let's take a look at uh, how that looks. Actually, it would help if I got the right tire. Yeah, so <laughs> that is really, really not good. That is past the point of no return. So I need to get two rear tires uh, before I leave. Hopefully some tire places around here will have that size and stock. If not, then I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just get some new wheels. Hmm. I think those wheels that I got for the S-Class could fit, but they're in Florida, so that's not really an option. One last thing I keep on forgetting. Here are the brakes. Look at this. So these are huge eight piston calipers, and I'm not sure how big the rotors are. They're like 13.5 inches or, or, or something like that. They're 330 millimeters pretty damn big rotors with awesome huge calipers. There's eight piston in the front and four piston in the rear. You can see those a little easier, but man, these, uh, these stop very well and hopefully all they need is a pad and rotor change and they'll be good to go. I'm not quite sure that that's the case, but 
who knows? So I hope you guys enjoyed my little adventure with this awesome SL55 AMG. I still have many, many adventures with this car because I haven't even scratched the surface. Uh, the next episode on this is just gonna be me going over everything wrong with this $8,900 example of a $130,000 car. And I think there's gonna be more than I bargained for. Um, but also, I mean, we have had some pleasant surprises and uh, this entire car is a pleasant surprise. I bought this thing sight unseen after all. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm still ecstatic over how awesome this thing is. But let me stop rambling. As always, like, comment, subscribe, social, and comment on my hair or uh, how scruffy it is or, or, or whatnot. Uh, my Twitter is at the real Tavarish, and the same thing for my Instagram. My Instagram is at the real Tavarish, Facebook.com slash ask Tavarish, and you can email me at ask Tavarish at gmail.com. I do get to every email, I read all of them. Uh, I might not respond uh, in time just because I do have a lot, but I do read everything and I see what you guys are saying, and I enjoy the support. I really, really do. Uh, so until next time, this is me telling you especially on cars like these, to wrench every day.